Summer is around the corner, the best time on earth. It's sunny, it's hot, it's good vibes. But there's also a couple of opportunities on So Rare and I want to talk about them, so let's get into it. Now you may be looking at me and thinking, what are you talking about? It's cold, it's wet, it's windy. This is not summer. Why would you possibly be discussing summer strategies in May? Simply to put it, May historically throughout the history of So Rare has been a good time to buy cards. If you look historically on the graph, you can see that it bottomed out in terms of the lowest price for a messy card of Limited was the 12th of May. Now that's very close to now and as he rose, he's gone from £465 to a peak of £1,200. Now that was on the 10th of August and that is a very key date because obviously one of the strategies to this is to buy cards now during May when people are panic selling towards the end of the season because they're going to get no utility for the next three months, two and a half months, whatever it is. And you ride the price rise all of summer and then you get to use them next year. But the thing you need to be very carefully aware of is that because so many people were alert to this strategy last season, it actually wasn't that much of a benefit because what happened in the first game week is so many cards fell in price quite substantially. So this got £643 by you know, two weeks after that. £643 compared to buying it for £643 at the end of last season. You've just locked up your money for one game week for over three, two and a half months now. That is not a good strategy. So what I want to say is that if you are anticipating buying cards now, just sitting on them, players that aren't really changing in, you know, circumstances too much will still be good scorers. You know, that strategy works only to a degree because at the start of the new season, so many people try this that, you know, it, it, in my opinion, you know, this is all just my opinion. This video is completely just my opinion, not financial advice, all of that. But it will not work if you try and hold it throughout the rest of the season because that anticipation of new season supply is coming. Everyone knows a new season supply are coming. That's going to drop prices and you don't need to wait until the new season supply comes out because if I remember right, PSG didn't come out for months. But it's that anticipation of these prices could drop. I need to get out soon. I'm listing before someone else. So what I will say is the returns this year will be slightly less than last year and be, that year was slightly less than a year before. That's kind of how cycles go. You know, if everyone is of the anticipation that they're going to make money and these cards are going to rise, why would you sell today? Let's wait three months and we'll sell them in, you know, three months time. So be aware of that, but understand that going from £465 to £1,158 is a great opportunity if you have um, the ability to just sell your cards and not play them, especially a top player like Lionel Messi. But that was one very key point I want to talk on. Lionel Messi is so good, it doesn't really matter where he moves, except for maybe Saudi Arabia, that he will perform well and he'll perform well on SO5. A lot of players speculate on players that do the complete opposite. Because too many people get carried away buying top challenger Europe players that have played so well that they're going to move away. On screen we have Anthony, a perfect example of this. He went from a bottom of £239, rose so substantially quickly to £701, and then boom. He was linked with Man United, he made the transfer to Man United, his scores are going to crash, his price is going to crash. You know, people are just panic selling now. It's gap down in the market where you could have picked him up a couple of weeks later for £208. And even then, that is essentially what I would call overvalued because people don't want to sell. And, you know, Man United is a big club where, you know, you still have that anticipation of big scores. And Man United is probably a good result if you're moving from challenger to champion, right? Nikola Vlasic an absolute top player on SO5, makes his way to Torino and his price dies with it. You know, so many examples. And a lot of these Challenge Europe top players for the anticipation, for the risk that they're going to incur over summer, actually have a drop. We saw this in Timber last year, even before the end of the season. Now, this might be a little bit more difficult to spot this season as everyone's dropped in price, but, you know, it does happen. And don't get me wrong, this doesn't just mean that they're from Challenger Europe, it's going to go badly. We had Timber stay at Ajax despite all the links, you know, links absolutely everywhere. You know, this time it's for the World Cup, obviously, for that reason, but it doesn't really matter what reason it is. Players can stay at their top clubs, but for me, it's not worth the risk of getting involved in these top Challenger Europe players that are some of the best, you know, under 23s in the world that obviously the top, player, the top teams are always looking for just try and be a bit more cautious with your pickups over the summer. Because obviously one strategy during the summer transfer window is just to buy in May, get a couple of games utility before the end of the season, and then sell into the, you know, the price rises during closer to August, or maybe just play the players that you want to play. Um, but the next strategy is obviously transfer speculation. The transfer window is open during summer. It's a great time. Players can move anywhere. It really, you know, juggles the ball around in world football. But it doesn't always mean good things for your so rare card. So I know this personally, Vinicius Souza last season, you would have seen I picked him up for £95 and sold him for £108. Good profit, right? 
No, not at all. Essentially, he was linked so posit positively to only big, good transfer windows for him, essentially. Celtic, PSV, Ajax. He was literally linked to all of them. Being a Celtic fan, I bought him and I was like, right, this, good, this guy absolutely slots perfectly into the Celtic team. Picked him up for £636. He rose all the way to £1,400. I still didn't sell, which obviously I wish I did. I think I tried the list below, but yeah, let's not get into it. But he was linked so positively to such good clubs. I was willing to risk so much of my budget just to get a, a chance at this guy rising even further in price. What happened? An Espanyol link out of absolutely nowhere. He ends up settling in Espanyol. He makes a move and his price dies. He moves from £1,400 to £334. So even someone like me who got in really early on him because I'm you know, close to the Celtic transfer rumours and all the rest of it, still made a substantial you know, minus 50% loss. A 50% unrealized loss, I should say, in a couple of weeks. Like, this is the huge risk that comes along with summer transfer window speculation. There's so much fake news. There's so much nonsense, right, where people on Showware price that as if it's actually news. Don't get caught up in the transfer speculation. Make smart, strategic choices on players where it doesn't really matter where they move. Now, of course, finding someone that isn't, hasn't got a bad move in him is near impossible. Everyone's got a bad move in them. Even Messi going to Saudi Arabia, right? But try and be smart with your decisions. Don't look at, you know, the transfer rumors and just buy and sell as quickly as you can. There's always someone quicker than you and you could be, you could be trading off false information that someone's just made up to get a click, right? So try and be smart with your decisions. And what I mean with this, I can only really bring in examples of what I've been doing. So you would have seen a couple of weeks ago, I bought in Yuri Tillemans into the club. One of the, you know, record transfer signings for me, a super rare, really big in my gallery. Why I'm so confident on him is because his, his contract is out at the end of the season. He's played consistently in the Premier League for years. He looks like he's pretty much guaranteed a starting spot wherever he moves, and most of the links I'm seeing are all positive. Now, this doesn't mean Yuri can't go to Man City and sit on the bench next to Calvin Phillips, but the fact his contract's running out gives me a little more certainty. And the big risk in this transfer speculation is uncertainty. With any player, the reason why Messi isn't necessarily a good pickup at the moment is uncertainty. It's not the fact he could move to Saudi Arabia because at the same time he could move to Barcelona. It's that uncertainty. It's much better to pick up a player that is certain, but obviously there is less positive upside to you know moves because they're just going to stay where they are and score exactly like they have. So realistically then, you have the strategy buy and hold, buy now, sell in August. You have the strategy of transfer speculation, which I'm trying to really not put people off, just be cautious of the risks because always someone quicker than you trading off false information, which you think is true. It's not a good situation to be in. But the third kind of strategy is what I would call strategic transfer speculation. So you might not even have a risk of this player. You're just looking at their contract, you know it's expiring soon, you know they're unhappy at the club, and they might make a strategic move that'll increase their SO5 scores. But at the same time, their downside shouldn't be too big either. And the perfect thing I think you could do this with, goalkeepers. Goalkeepers have the most upside of anyone because obviously there's only one position, they're quite scarce, and you can go from having someone that's sitting on the bench scoring zero every week to someone doesn't really matter what scores they're putting. As long as they're playing, they will be a good pickup on so rare. We can see this with Barkas, right? He played for Celtic and fans pretty much didn't think he had hands he was that bad. It didn't matter. Because he was so unhappy at the club, everyone knew he would move. So he got he's gone from a low of, say, £11.40, right? to a high in a couple of months of £128 just by getting a starting spot. Now, this doesn't mean you should just go out and buy a load of bench goalkeepers. You need to make strategic decisions. In this uh, situation, again, Barkas wasn't happy at the club, but signed for a record fee. Well, not a record fee, but signed for a huge fee of about £5 million. Someone like that, right? They're even gonna, gonna stick, grind it out because they're worth so much money or try and get a loan, try and get a move. So I can give an example of how that might work for someone that I know a little bit about. Adrian San Miguel, Liverpool's third choice goalkeeper. Um, he has, you know, looking like he's at the end of his contract. He's he's ex extended a couple of years now, one year here, one year here. But I think finally it's probably going to run out. He's 36 years old, likely probably going to go back to Spain. Hopefully La Liga Secunda, right? The second division of La Liga. Now it's covered, it'd be great. So he could be a good pickup because £1.50, the downside is you lose a pound fifty if he doesn't go realistically, you'll probably still be worth about the same price. These are great pickups because they're strategic. They're strategic where they go from scoring no points to potentially scoring points. Regardless of whether you moves or not, there'll be links which will probably push his price a little bit upwards. And the downside is capped. There's very little downside because if they're scoring nothing at the moment, their price is equivalent to them scoring nothing at the moment. But 
I want to talk about some big risks, especially with Adrian. Why I know so much about him, I've had him in the gallery for two years. So let's say he was worth £50. I've had him sitting there for two years, accruing XP and scoring zero points every single week. It doesn't sound like the worst scenario to have, but the more capital you lock up in these players that don't do anything, you're just essentially eroding value away because as every new season comes on, new supply comes on, prices typically trend down. So the longer you're locking up without earning a yield, without earning return in SO5 or however you, you know, trading, however you do it, it is underwhelmingly very bad. But the goalkeepers, as I said before, they're the highest risk, they're the highest reward. So I like picking up goalkeepers, particularly under 23 goalkeepers, but be strategic with it. Pick someone that is so um, such a good player that it's it wouldn't be right for them to sit on the bench. Or pick someone that's such a good goalkeeper in the starting spot, it doesn't make sense that they're going to stay at their club for that next season. David Rea, a perfect example. Great season at Brentford this season. One of the top players in the world at the minute that seems to have just come out of nowhere. He is likely going to get a move. It could be to Tottenham. It could be to Spain. It could be to literally anywhere. But let's think about it. Who's going to replace him? Even if they don't replace him, who's the backup at Brentford that might get a shot or people think might get a shot and you can sell into that hype? Now, I use this strategy not just during the summer transfer windows, but any time during so rare because I think having a starter and having the backup is fantastic. But even better than that, if you can get them, you know, two for one, what I call it, if you can get a starter and a backup for the price of a starting nail goalkeeper, that's also strong. But why I talk about Unai Simon is because he's one of the best goalkeepers in the world. He's linked every single transfer window to someone. Now, he's pretty loyal to Athletic Club Bilbao because obviously they have their um, Basque region rules where they can only sign players from around the region. So, of course, it's very, very hard to, to um, spot talent and to, to get them in the team. So when you got them, they don't sell them very often. But who's playing behind him? An under 23 young prospect, absolutely huge. Now, full disclosure, if you've watched channel, you know I have both of these cards in rare. I've had them for absolutely ages now, but I had to, I have them for this region. I have them for this reason, sorry. If one of them gets a move, the other one there becomes so much more valuable. You've got two for the price of one. But even better than that, recently, Julian has been playing just as well as Unai Simon. He's come in for a couple of injuries. He's rotated in to get a bit more experience. There, it's not that I can't see him sitting on the bench for another year. It's just the fact that Simon being linked every year, them having a perfect backup, they could make 30 million and not really have a drop in the standards of goalkeeping. These are the sort of scenarios you want to be looking for. And I only share the keepers I you know, have in my gallery because I know the most about them. I can talk about them without needing to you know, look up players for ages. There is a million and one opportunities in the Surrey market like this. You know, who's just injured? Who's the backup coming in to get a, um, a, a shot at taking the first spot? Rather than random transfer speculation, and I feel that, you know, strategic transfer speculation is a far better strategy where, you know, you can pick two players up for the same position and regardless of what happens, you can still have, you know, a positive outcome. It doesn't just apply to goalkeepers. I just like it for goalkeepers. I think they have the most upside. But there is another strategy that you can implement over summer. And it is... I don't know. I don't really have a name for it. I'll just call it the Dirty Dirty Stackers. So obviously stacking on so rare is where you pick a group of players from the same team. So you can have a defensive stack. So you have two defenders and a goalkeeper or you just rock a full team stack. And why I've got Chelsea on the screen is because they could be a perfect example. I say could with a huge <laughs> um, asterisk next to it because no one knows what's going to happen next season. That's obviously the risk in it, right? But Chelsea have performed so badly this year. You know, they're going to have a new manager. They're going to have some big signings come in. And everyone that's, you know, new to the club last season, they know each other a little bit better. Essentially, this whole um, strategy re revolves around buying a stack. Let's call it a full stack for the sake of this video. Buying a full stack of one team and hoping they improve in scoring for next season. As they improve in scoring, their prices should go up. And the example I pulled up on screen is Chelsea because of how badly they performed. And standardly, they perform or averagely, they perform a lot better. Um, I think I've seen on Twitter BTC and me is pulling this exact strategy and I actually discussed it with him very shortly and he thinks that Nkunku filling this forward spot is going to be a game changer for Chelsea and it's exactly what they need along with a new manager. I pretty much agree. Now, Chelsea isn't a budget stack and the risk with Chelsea is knowing who's going to play where like in the defensive stack in the, in the centre-back spot for example but there are the pieces there to make a very good stack on a budget that if Chelsea go back to their standard way of playing or, or the players go back to you know their ability based on how much they spent on the players, there is a great opportunity for a team like Chelsea to absolutely perform. And this just doesn't just apply to Chelsea. I think of Ajax, they've had a pretty bad season this year. You know, a lot of their players would underperform compared to you know where you might expect them to. But what this strategy is, is essentially buying a stack of a team and hoping or expecting them to perform better than last year. And this stacking strategy can be paired with, or we can call it, you know, its own sort of strategy, 
the one you've seen implement on my so rare journey relegation lover this season on so rare we will have the opportunity for players to get relegated and become better scorers likely rise in value you know you've seen me pick up a couple of H elche players i've you know guaranteed to get you know pretty much guaranteed to get relegated from la liga i picked up a super rare edgar bade i won a reward of fidel and i've held him for this whole time you know, they went and pumped Rayo Vallecano 4-0 the other week and everyone wanted to get an Elche stack for this reason. Any team that's going to get relegated, right, the, the risk, I, I always bring up the risk, right, but the risk is obvious. Their best players or the players that you've bought move on, they go sit on a bench somewhere else or they go back to the, the league they're playing in and, and perform exactly as they did before. But the upside is they drop down a league. Everything gets easier for them. You know, players like Edgar Bade that got two uh, clean sheets this entire season... You know, that could easily be 10 or 15 next year when he's in a much easier league, if he keeps a spot. So it's linked with team stacking, but it's what I'm going to call separate because you don't need to go for a full stack. Becoming relegation lover. I think everyone and their dog has looked at Southampton, you know, to become the next relegated team in the Premier League and who's going to be their stars that stay and don't stay. A little bit of a warning. I do think the Premier League is particularly difficult to do this with because when a team drops down from the Premier League, the wage gap is so different. The you know upside of winning the league is so different. You know, I, I'm trying to bring to life here who last season dropped down and became an absolute monster. I don't think it works exactly the same. Whereas in maybe the Bundesliga or maybe in uh, the French League, I think dropping down and bouncing back up the next season does seem a little more likely. But that doesn't mean a Stuart Armstrong, a Bella Kotchat, you know, it doesn't mean that these players are going to be bad. Obviously, we've got people like James Ward-Prowse, 99% chance of moving on. There is still upsides in the Premier League relegation. But for me, I'd focus elsewhere. Become relegation lover. Pick a few players that you think are guaranteed to stay down. Some extra tips for this. Older players that are, you know, over the hill aren't going to be looking to make more money. Just want a casual life playing football and then earning cash. And bring in some of that smart transfer speculation. Look for someone that's absolutely linked nowhere. Look for someone that's had a bog standard season. Look for someone that's been at the club for absolutely ages. That's all I can think of then. So, to recap, we have the buy and hold strategy. Just be aware, August last year was the, was the top or, yeah, the top... Try and sell before then if you are intending to do that. Maybe you're just buying a club, whatever. Uh, transfer speculation... Don't be that guy on Twitter that just reads transfer news live and then goes and buys the card because you might be buying it off someone that beat you and you know the risks are there of it can be false news and all the rest of it. Try and do what I call, you know, is it what I say well it's strategic transfer speculation. I think that works a little bit better. I especially like this with goalkeepers for the reasons I explained in this video. Then we have the dirty dirty stackers. You pick a stack that you think is going to improve in performance for next season. This can work, work across any league. Just be you know aware of the risks of being wrong, firstly, and um, then moving to a different club. And then finally, relegation lover, everyone's favourite one. Try and pick a side or try and pick players that you think will go down, stay with their team and get them back up. That has been my summer strategy. It is just my opinion, not financial advice, but I want to wish you all the best. If you like this, please drop it a like. Cheers.